All right, and strong and healthy teeth is what we want. And of course, that is our subject of discussion today. Good morning. How are you this morning? As always, thank you so much for joining us on My Doctor. My name is Winnie Lubem, of course, like we said, and from the video today, it's all about oral hygiene. And of course, oral health is a key indicator of overall health, well-being and quality of life. However, oral diseases are the most common non-communicable diseases that, and of course, affect people throughout their lifetime. And this causing pain, discomfort, disfigurement, and even death. So stick around until the end of the show to understand how one can get to that extreme of, you know, disfigurement and death. But you know the drill by now. If you have any question in relation to today's topic that is on oral hygiene, Please give us a call on 0791478990 or better yet, send us a text message on 40920. We'll be looking at your questions a little bit later. But for now, my guest is here. Good morning. Good morning. Long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been a while. It's been a while. Almost a year. Yes, how yes. are you doing? I'm very we can fine. say Happy I'm New very... Year, but the new year is almost coming to an end, so it's fine. We'll yeah. forgive you for that. Yeah. But uh, before we get into the discussion, and since it's been a long time, and yes. I'm pretty sure people have forgotten who you are and what you do, just kindly remind them. Good morning, Kenya. My name is Dr. Paul Murumba Onyancha. I'm a dental surgeon by profession. Uh, so basically, I deal with uh, teeth, anything that deals with teeth. Yeah. I treat patients who have, uh, you know, uh, diseases that affect the teeth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Karibu sana. Now, let's just go back to the basics. Yes. Um, good oral hygiene. I know most of the time we're told to make sure you brush your teeth twice a day. Some people do, some people do not. Um, so then, good oral hygiene, let's just start from there. What does it mean and what does it entail, really? Um... Good oral hygiene basically is, mm -hmm. uh, is, is a practice right. that somebody uh, makes to, to ensure that their teeth uh, is clean mm. and is free from diseases. Okay. So there are certain habits that one should be having, uh, you know, should, should put in place in their day-to-day -day lives, All right. uh, which includes uh, brushing of their teeth mm -hmm. at least twice a day okay. in the morning and preferably before you sleep. Okay. Uh, then you have flossing of your teeth, that is usage of a special string mm -hmm. that uh, cleans between uh, your teeth mm -hmm. uh, because there, there are areas where your brush cannot reach. Yeah. So you need a dental floss mm -hmm. that can be able to clean uh, between, between your teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, then you have um, things like uh, usage of mouthwash, mm -hmm. which has antibacterial effect. Remember, bacteria uh, loves right. sugar and this yes. can you know lead to mm -hmm. gum disease if you if you if you're having the interaction between but bacteria and uh, and sugar okay yes but you see i like what you said at least twice a day that is yes. on brushing so you can brush as as, as many times as you want because i know some people who would brush after every single meal so whether it's a main meal whether it's a snack whatever as long as they have something in their mouth yes. they would have to brush after yes is that safe or is that too extreme well it, it really depends. Okay. Um, there's no harm in brushing your teeth after every meal. Okay. But studies have shown that uh, brushing your teeth at least twice mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, effective in preventing gum disease mm -hmm. and uh, diseases of the heart tissue, the teeth, okay. uh, such okay. as dental caries. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being, um, as you eat your food, mm -hmm. there's something called plaque okay. that yeah. uh, forms... Uh, on the surface of your teeth. Mm -hmm. So basically when you're brushing your teeth, you're removing plaque. Because mm -hmm. plaque will attract more bacteria yeah. and cause gum disease. Mm -hmm. Now, the danger with brushing your teeth too much is, is uh, you might mm -hmm. cause gum recession. Yes. Because uh, the bristles that are on the brush mm -hmm. are mechanical. Mm -hmm. And the tissues, uh, the, the, I mean the gum is, uh, is, is, a, is a tissue. Yeah. And it has blood vessels and it's a living, you know, organism in itself. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you continually cause friction mm -hmm. on your teeth and your gum, mm -hmm. and you probably are not doing it very well, you might actually cause, uh, a, a, yeah. I, mean, I mean, a lot of problems like mm -hmm. abrasion. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would recommend twice, okay. um, especially before you go to sleep, because mm -hmm. when you go to sleep, mm -hmm. there is um, lack of you know, proper salivary flow. Yeah. Your mouth is in, closed. In, in the mouth, yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you tend to get more, you know, uh, gum disease mm. at night. At night. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So okay. 
twice a day is good if you if, you, right. if you can manage mm -hmm. three times a three day times. <laughs> okay yes. all right well yeah, looks good so but then yeah. keep in mind the aspect of then gum um, recession because of yes. course from that you you expose your teeth like, yes yeah where anyway we'll talk about that later on yes but now fine brush at least twice a day yes we try sometimes we don't but then again, is the kind of brush one uses also a factor? Because I know of some people who believe that the tougher the bristles, the more cleaner the teeth are. Well, that's a misconception. Okay. Actually, as dentists, we recommend that you use a soft bristle brush. Okay. Um, because this brush is going to be friendly to your teeth. Mm -hmm. If you use a tough uh, brush mm -hmm. it has, it, and it has been shown that uh, as you I mean the longer you use your brush if you don't change it after three months mm -hmm. the bristle starts becoming very hard mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that becomes injurious mm -hmm. to your gum yeah so uh, personally and uh, I know this is a view that is shared by mm. <laughs> many dentists yes it's 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 important to mm -hmm. have um, a soft Soft bristle brush, bristle brush yeah. yeah, to be able to mm -hmm. you know take care of your uh, gum, yeah. and of course so that it doesn't cause uh, abrasion. Okay, yeah, all right. Because uh, we see patients mm -hmm. having yeah. uh, abrasion, mm -hmm. and, 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 and of course when you have uh, uh, abrasion of your, of uh, the enamel, mm. you're exposing your second layer, yeah. which has nerves and. Mm -hmm. You know, patients get sensitivity. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and we'll talk about the aspect of sensitivity. Um, yes. um, again, is it like um, exposure to, again, too much brushing and, of course, using a very, very tough brush? But then again, for the children. Yes. When do we introduce brushing of teeth? Because I know for so many parents will be like, oh, well, but Michelle is too young. And you see the aspect of gagging. We do not want that to, to happen. Yes. Most of them don't know that you're supposed to pit out, uh, spit out the... Um, toothpaste and yes. as compared to swallowing because most of the children of course will end up swallowing um so then when at what age is it recommended to introduce so that of course you inculcate that aspect or culture of brushing your teeth at least twice a day uh, I, I would recommend uh, you know beginning of brushing with this when, when the milk teeth have already come out okay uh, roughly around six years mm. uh, when you start seeing the milk teeth coming out, mm -hmm. it's good to start, you know, using a soft cloth mm. to remove plaque. Okay. Okay. Uh, on the teeth. Just because, uh, I mean, just like adults, mm -hmm. children also get, you know, gum disease, they do. Mm -hmm. and because they develop plaque. Mm. So it's important to use a, you know, a soft cloth mm. to uh, remove uh, the plaque mm -hmm. on your teeth, or on the on the baby's teeth, okay. and even uh, uh, um, the gum. Well, the tongue. Like I, was, I was going to tongue. say the tongue. Okay. Yes, exactly. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so, how do you do it? Because I have tried with my niece, yes. <laughs> and it's very, very difficult. Especially the back of the tongue. It's very, very difficult because they gag and you're scared. What will happen to you know mm. all those things? So then, how do you do it? Like, what's the best way to help a child, of course, not get um, or a build up of, of plaque, especially at the back of the tongue, where most of it happens. Um. I would advise that you you, you, you do it gently. Okay. And if you cannot do it, it's better to visit a dentist so they can be able to, okay. to, to do it professionally mm -hmm. in the clinic mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we have special equipments and special chemicals that can be able to, okay. to do that. But this is something that you can do at home. Mm. And of course, as the child grows, they, it becomes a habit. Mm. When they see you brush the teeth, also they will want, also want to brush yes. their teeth as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but then again, so, so then the aspect of toothpaste. Yes. Which toothpaste or the content in the toothpaste? Mm. What is some of the things that we should avoid and, and which ones are good for us? And can you use the same toothpaste as an, um, for an adult? Use it on the child? Because we see most families do so. Um, now, uh, any, tooth that, any toothpaste that has fluoride, because okay. it's controlled, uh, mm -hmm. um, the amount of toothpaste that is, uh, the amount of fluoride that is in the in, in the toothpaste mm -hmm. has been shown to be protective to okay. the teeth. So, uh, so any toothpaste that has fluoride is, mm -hmm. is, 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 is good for the teeth. Mm -hmm. But I would discourage parents from using a highly fluoridated uh, uh, toothpaste, toothpaste yeah. to, to children. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to name the brands. Okay. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to name the brands. Mm -hmm. 
but um, um, children um, cannot tolerate too much too fluoride much, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because it can be actually toxic to them. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you're in doubt, always visit your dentist. They yeah. can be able to advise you on mm -hmm. uh, you know, how to go about it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so then how do you know? Is there like a, a specific percentage that is recommended, uh, recommended for fluoride? And if so, should we, is it written, mostly written at the back of the, of the toothpaste so that people know? Because again, sometimes we might just say, oh, well, a toothpaste is a toothpaste. The child will use it, an adult will use it. But like he said, it's not recommended for children mm. um, if it's too much. So how much is too much? Is there like a specific percentage? Um, we, we normally recommend one part per million. All right. Yeah, one part per million uh, uh, levels, mm -hmm. which is safe mm -hmm. for, uh, for, 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 for usage. Mm -hmm. But for children, we need to be cautious uh, not to use too much. Okay. Yeah, again, you know, just a little mm -hmm. uh, toothpaste, like a pea shape. Yeah. You put it on the, on the, the toothbrush dry. and yeah. then uh, use it for... And then you encourage the child to, mm -hmm. to spit yeah. because <laughs> most children... Yeah. You know, they will end up swallowing, so like, especially the toothpaste for the, the children, like the one that is specifically meant for children. It's exactly. very sweet and, and very exactly. tasty. Yes. So most of them will end up swallowing instead of, of spitting. Y yes, yeah. but in the clinic, we normally show them how to do how it. How to, okay. So, so I, I would, because this is a public health concern, yeah. and it's a public health issue, um, you know, we encourage parents, mm -hmm. guardians, uh, to bring the children to the dentist, we will okay. be able to show them how, on, on how to use mm. it. Yes. Okay. But why then? Okay, what could happen? This is just out of curiosity. What would happen if a child keeps on swallowing the toothpaste for, for a very long time? What could happen? Of course, um, the, the fluoride level, when it becomes higher mm -hmm. in, the, in the body, can All cause right. toxicity oh, wow. yeah, okay. to mm -hmm. the internal organs. So mm -hmm. uh, this can be a, an emergency. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we encourage that uh, if you feel that your child uh, can access to let's say toothpaste. Make sure you, you know, store it where they higher. cannot be able to yes. to reach. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So fine. So brush um, twice a day if you can. That is at least you can brush thrice a day. Well and good. Yes. Um, use the right amount of toothpaste and and all those things. Yes. So now the aspect of brushing the technique. How yes. do we? do it and is there a recommended time because um, i hear people say oh well you're supposed to brush your teeth at least three minutes or it shouldn't be anything shorter than that so can we just go through the technique um very briefly so uh, basically the, the key thing to remember is uh, always take your time to brush your teeth okay. don't be in a hurry mm -hmm. uh i know <laughs> So, some of our patients come to the clinic and say, you know, well, in the morning I'm very tired. Yeah, I'm, you're rushing. You know, I'm rushing you don't to work. Time. I don't have. Yep. So it's it's good to take your time. Mm -hmm. Three to five minutes okay. would be, you know, uh, adequate All because right. that will ensure that you thoroughly brush your teeth. Your teeth, yeah. Yes, and it's important to brush your teeth in circular motion, mm. slowly, mm -hmm. gently, mm -hmm. on all the surfaces of your teeth, uh, including the back. Mm going all the way mm -hmm. uh, and then you go inside the mm -hmm. the, um, the mouth mm -hmm. uh, we call it the buccal surface yeah. then you have the palatal surface mm -hmm. then you have uh, the occlusal surface occlusal mm -hmm. surface is where the the upper teeth and the lower and teeth the, meet yeah. uh, okay. because there are grooves there mm -hmm. where food and yes. bacteria can mm -hmm. you know uh, get dislodged and cause yeah. uh, dental caries mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's important to brush all the surface of your teeth mm -hmm. okay um, and then, of course, there are people who are left-handed, those who are right-handed. Right -handed, yes. <laughs> so the ones who are right-handed mm -hmm. would <laughs> tend to brush this side more. More, true. Yeah. You're right. So, so as dentists, when they come to the clinic, you actually see more, more um, abrasion okay. on the left side if they're uh, they're left-handed. Yeah. So it's important to uh, ensure that you have equal mm -hmm. brushing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. especially all the surfaces of your teeth. Okay. Yeah, all right. And then, what about the tongue? Because there's some people who say, oh, well, um, you are not supposed to brush your tongue every day or every time you brush your teeth. Is that true or not? Well, um, you, 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 you're supposed to brush your, your tongue at least once a day. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. not too much mm -hmm. because the, the tissues on the tongue are very yeah. soft. Yes. Uh, if you brush uh, you, 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 your tongue after every meal, mm -hmm. 
uh, you're exposing your 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 teeth to 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 abrasion to to to, to wear, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it can actually cause ulceration because mm -hmm. they're actually um, mm -hmm. uh, salivary glands yeah. that are you know on the upper surfaces of, of the tongue. Okay. So you don't want to injure them and okay. cause other health problems. Yeah. Yes. Do you also alter your taste buds? <laughs> People say <laughs> that like the more you brush on your tongue, you tend to alter with your taste bud, and then years later, you will never ever have like the actual taste of food or whatever it is that you put in your mouth. Well, the, the, the good thing with the tongue is that uh, just like the, the gum, okay. or what you call the gingiva, right. has a high, right. re, high reparative mm -hmm. uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a way the, the tongue repairs itself. Mm -hmm. But of course, if, 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 the, if, if, if the amount of force mm -hmm. and the duration of, uh, of uh, brushing of the tongue mm -hmm. becomes much larger, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. tend to lower that capacity to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to regenerate. So you don't want to end up having, you know, ulcerations yeah. and alteration of taste. But because uh, as we've seen, even mouthwashes mm -hmm. can actually cause, uh, you know, uh, you know, alteration of taste sensation. Yeah. yeah. So it's important to be a bit gentle mm -hmm. because these are very f fragile uh, tissues. Okay. And uh, you don't want to cause any injuries. Okay. Yes. So wait. So what are you saying in terms of as far as? Because I was about to ask you. Wait. Is a mouthwash really necessary? Because there's some people who don't use mouthwash, and yes. I think they don't have problems. And there's some who um, use it but still have issues. And I mean, and and even back then, our parents and grandparents. I mean, first of all, they didn't have the kind of toothbrush that we use now. Yes, yes. They used sticks yes. and they did have toothpaste, so, and they were okay. Most of them were okay. Yes. So one would ask, I mean, is a mouthwash really, really necessary? And if so, then how frequent are we supposed to use? Because like he said, again, you also don't want to, to cause problems, much as you're mm. trying to prevent, you know, dental diseases and, and conditions. Mm. Well, well uh, a mouthwash is, 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 is very important. Okay. Because, um, Number one, you may not be meticulous in your brushing. Mm. And remember, like I said, there's, there's bacteria in your mouth. Yeah. And the bacteria can also, bacteria can, mm. can cause gum disease, can okay. cause dental caries. All right. So basically what the mouthwash does, mm. it reduces the level of uh, bacteria that, okay. that is harmful. All right. And um, of course, it, I mean, the, 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 the mouthwash, because it's fluidy, mm -hmm. It can actually it goes, penetrate into right. the okay. exactly. Okay. So, it's so, so we recommend uh, mm -hmm. cloxidine based mm -hmm. mouthwashes mm -hmm. uh, for your regular, uh, you know, you know, usage. Don't okay. use the the the, the, the stronger ones. Okay. There, there, there are mouthwashes that we recommend as dentists to patients who have had uh, who, have, who have undergone surgical procedures. Surgical procedures. Right. Those are not supposed to be used for more than okay. a week. Okay. Exactly. Or because they are a little bit stronger. Exactly. Okay, so we need to take a very short break, but of course yes. it's, it's very important for us to just have the base covered. Yes. <laughs> and then when we come back, we'll also talk about some of the signs and symptoms of dental problems, some of the dental um, you know, diseases and conditions. So if you have any question in relation to the same, please feel free to call us live or 791-478-990 or better yet, send us a text message on 40920. We'll be looking at your questions after this very short break. Stay with us. All right. Welcome back. Glad you're still with us. This is my doctor. And just in case you're tuning in right now, our focus today is on oral hygiene. And of course, before we went for a break, we covered the beast. I mean, why is it important for you to brush? How long are you supposed to brush? And all those things. So we covered that during the first um, part of the show. So now we want to focus on then some of the signs and symptoms of dental problems and some of this dental, um, you know, diseases that of course we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, if not every single day. So if you have any question in relation to today's topic, then feel free to call us live or 791-478-990 is the number to call through. Or if you have issues with, you know, your oral hygiene in general, you can also send us a text message on 40920 and we'll be looking at them in a short while. But for now, can we then discuss um, some of these common health problems that we encounter and even you as dentists uh, come across? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, where to start? All right. Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are so many conditions yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that affect the, the oral cavity. Mm -hmm. um, basically, uh, if you just look at how the oral cavity is, uh, mm -hmm. is structured, the anatomy, uh, you have the tongue, mm -hmm. 
you have the teeth, you have the palate, mm -hmm. uh, of course you have the gums and the, and the, the, the blood vessels, mm -hmm. the, the um, salivary glands. Yeah. So basically if we start with the teeth, um, there's something called uh, dental caries. Mm -hmm. So dental caries is one of the uh, heart tissue uh, diseases that affect the teeth. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, basically a progressive condition that causes loss of tooth substance, the heart tissue. Mm -hmm. On the outside of the tooth, you have the enamel, the second layer being the dentin, and the third layer is uh, the pulp. Okay. So what people commonly call holes mm -hmm. on the teeth are called dental caries. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, there's, um, there's also gingivitis. Mm -hmm which is uh, uh, inflammation of the gum, mm. but it's under a cluster of uh, conditions we call periodontal diseases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So under periodontal diseases, uh, basically what you have is inf uh, diseases of the, 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 the tissues that surrounds the teeth. Uh, that is uh, periodontitis mm -hmm. and uh, gingivitis. Okay. Gingivitis is a milder form of uh, the periodontal Period, diseases, yes. mm -hmm. which can progress to periodontitis. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically you move from uh, inflammation of the gum, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which if left untreated, now goes and attacks mm -hmm. the periodontium and the alveolar bone mm -hmm. that surrounds the teeth, then you get uh, now, now periodontitis. Mm -hmm. um, they present differently, but they have similar characteristics. Okay. Uh, so basically when you have gingivitis, you have uh, inflamed gums. So around the margins of the teeth, you, you find the, the gum is swollen. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it appears red. Um, and then it also you know, bleeds on slight provocation. When you brush your teeth, you yeah. tend to yeah, find you notice, yeah. uh, you know, blood mm -hmm. uh, oozing from the, from the mouth. Mm -hmm. um, you can also have bad breath. Mm. Yeah, bad breath is also a sign of gum disease. Mm -hmm. um, and other, you know, uh, signs and mm -hmm. symptoms. Okay. Now when, you turn, w when it moves to periodontitis, now you start having uh, mobility of the teeth. Mm -hmm. The teeth becomes mobile yeah. and uh, some of them fall off. Mm -hmm. Patients feel a lot of pain. Uh, you can have fever, chills. Mm -hmm. So it's important to visit your dentist to have these uh, conditions addressed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and you see, most of the time, yes. um, and especially as, as far as inflammation is concerned, yes. I mean, most of us tend to think, oh, well, maybe I was too um, rough <laughs> when, when brushing, and then, of course, my gums are infl inflamed. We don't really seek treatment with that. We wait yes. until maybe it will go away on its own. Mm. So is this the aspect of waiting um, for it to go away on its own? Does it make the condition worse? Yes, of course, if you wait, the conditions becomes worse. Mm -hmm. Even the treatment becomes a bit more complex. Complex, yes. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. because as dentists, we've realized, uh, yes, the, the health-seeking habits in Kenya has improved. Mm -hmm. More people are, uh, are going to the dentist yeah. to have their regular check. All right. But most patients that I see in my clinic mm -hmm. uh, tend to come when there's pain. Yep. So we discourage you to, uh, you know, from just coming when there's pain. There's Always pain. come, mm -hmm. you know, at least twice a year for yeah. your dental check. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you come for your regular de uh, dental checkup, we can be able to, you know, show you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, in more advanced clinics, you can actually ha have, uh, you know, an intraoral camera can mm -hmm. show you on a screen mm -hmm. the, the, the general status of your teeth. Okay. So we can All be right. able to pick... Um, uh, small cavities mm. that should be attended to before they become large. Mm -hmm. Remember when you have a small cavity, the treatment would be a failing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The moment it becomes large and it goes all the way to, to the pulp, mm. the treatment changes from a filling mm. to a root canal treatment. Okay. Yes, exactly, which is yeah. more, more invasive yes. than a filling. Yeah. And even in terms of cost, mm -hmm. it becomes more costly to treat mm -hmm. A patient who requires a root canal treatment and a feeling. Yeah. Yes. All right. And I think we'll talk about then all those options later on because there's yes. people who believe yes. that the only way to deal with, and especially when there's pain, yes. um, is just tooth extraction. But of course, there are different ways that you can you can do that without necessarily having to perform tooth um, extraction. Yes. 
Okay, so then as far as the diseases are concerned, and, and we talked about um, foul smell in the mouth. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask, are there people who, I don't know if it's genetics <laughs> <laughs> or what usually happens because yes. this person has a foul smell all the time. Whether they brush their teeth or not, there's that smell and it's not good. And I don't know if most of the time they know or they don't know because I think to them it's normal. So they don't know whether this is bad or this is good or what's normal in between. Yes. So is there anything like genetics playing a role as far as that is concerned? Uh, well, not that I know of. Okay. Uh, basically, when you start from the baseline, mm -hmm. when a patient presents with the, with the uh, bad, sorry, bad breath, mm -hmm. what you call halitosis, that's mm. the technical term for it. Mm -hmm. The first thing that comes to mind is gum disease. Okay. Okay. Gingivitis, periodontitis mm. that can cause, uh, you know, you know, bad breath, uh, which, you know, goes away when you use a mouthwash and you come for your mm. scaling and polishing. All right. So basically, um, when you have inflamed gums, mm -hmm. and inf I mean, I mean, like I said, mm -hmm. gum and oral tissues are living tissues. Mm. So when they get diseased they start to produce bad smell. Yeah. So basically when you come for scaling and polishing, we are removing what you call tartar. Mm. Tartar mm. and, and plaque. Yeah. Because this is, this is like a calcif calcified mass mm -hmm. that is embedded on your teeth, mm. between your mm -hmm. teeth and your gum. Yeah. So when you remove it, mm -hmm. we ensure that the, the, the teeth goes back to, mm. to, to healthy being. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there the, 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 the some conditions, there are some situations whereby the, the halitosis or mm -hmm. bad breath will not go away. Yeah. So we start you know, thinking about maybe you have an ENT problem because mm -hmm. you can have infections mm -hmm. on the throat yeah. that can also, also cause uh, bad breath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you come to the dentist, we'll you know, evaluate and then refer you appropriately. Mm -hmm. so, and, and of course, the other systemic condition can cause uh, bad breath. But the baseline is, the, the, the keyword is always come to the dentist mm -hmm. for your regular checkup okay. and, and cleaning so that you prevent bad breath. Mm -hmm. Now, um, because bad breath sometimes, it's, you know, it's a psychological issue. It is. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, people don't want to be told that they have bad breath. Yes. Because it will affect their self-esteem. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's even uncomfortable so, to just tell someone, well, you know, this. Exactly. Yeah. So I think the safest way is to come to the dentist because yeah. we'll give you that privacy and confidentiality. Mm. We will tell you right yeah. on your face that you have bad breath and this is because of <laughs> gum okay. disease. Okay, all right. And then we'll, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we will, uh, you know, treat it. Advice appropriately. Yes, yes, exactly. All right, because I was about to ask then, suppose someone does not have gum disease like they're just okay like the mouth yes. everything is fine they do not have any condition or any disease or dental again condition mm. um could it be then like let's say the guts aside from an infection on the throat yes. um the gut or just stomach or just anything something is wrong yes uh when you have condition that you know affects your gut mm -hmm. um that goes all the way to esophagus mm. Uh, basically what you call GIT mm -hmm. uh, problems, you mm -hmm. can have bad breath. Yeah. So we recommend that once you go to the dentist mm -hmm. and uh, they ascertain that the problem is not coming from, from, from your teeth and from your gum, mm -hmm. we refer you to a, a gastroenterologist yeah. who will be able now to treat that condition mm -hmm. uh, so that the, 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 the bad breath is, is, is contained, yeah. yes. All right, because I, I mean, it might be difficult because someone would say, I brush every day, mm. I use um, the dental floors, I use a mouthwash, but I mean, it's, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not going away. Mm. Okay, and then something else that I found interesting was stress and dental conditions. How are they related? Because we all get stressed every single, <laughs> almost all the time. Oh, uh, well, when you get stressed, mm -hmm. basically your immune system is lowered. Okay, okay. And anything that lowers the immune system prevents you from fighting diseases. Right, okay. So the mouth, just like any other part of the body, yeah. can also, you know, have a manifestation mm -hmm. of, uh, of stress. So you can get, uh, you know, blisters mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and of course, 
uh, patients who are stressed sometimes may not brush their teeth meticulously mm -hmm. as, as, mm -hmm. as ones who were not stressed. Yeah. But basically, what you're asking is uh, that relationship between mm. Be between uh, the stress and 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 uh, and, the, and the oral cavity mm -hmm. is basically an immune system All right. okay. uh, issue. Okay. So when the immune system goes down, you have you're prone uh, to, to getting exactly, infections yeah. and mm. disease and all that. To exactly. so what level then? Because you see, we all, I mean, we all have our own levels of stress and all those things. Mm. And I mean, it's different from person to person because yes. let's say the way I am able to handle my levels of stress is not the same as yours and vice versa. Mm. So are we talking about like those extreme cases where let's say we do not have control over and sometimes we don't, because there's some people who, um, when you, I'm, most of the time they'll tell you, no, me, I'm not stressed, I'm okay. But in real sense, they are, they are stressed. Uh, well, I think I would answer that question um, by saying that the stress levels that the body cannot be able to contain. Okay. Because there's a way the body tries to, yeah. to, to contain the stress. Mm -hmm. uh, because the immune system now kicks in and prevents you from... Uh, uh, you, 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 your, your body, you know, mm -hmm. getting too much stress that you cannot be able to, to, to fight infections. Yeah. Um, there are other factors that can play, I mean, can come into, into play. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're immunocompromised, yeah. there are patients who have, you know, immunocompromised, uh, HIV. Uh, so if you combine the, the immunocompromised state, mm -hmm. And then the stress, now you get uh, manifestation yeah. in the mouth. But most patients would, you know, uh, fight their stress levels mm -hmm. if the immune system is good. Yeah. But if it's too much, now you start getting uh, uh, the, the immune system going down mm -hmm. and the dental infections uh, going up. Okay. Yes. All right. And then um, we talked about an aspect of then systemic diseases and, of course, um, dental, again, dental or oral um, you know, hygiene or dental problems as well. Um, and, and one of them, I think, is diabetes in mm. terms of the, the teeth are weakened and all those things. Can you just help us understand how this do, you know, come about? Now, basically, uh, when you have diabetes, you, 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 you're going to have weakened immune system mm -hmm. and uh, the reparative capacity of the body is reduced. Yeah. And because gingivitis and dental caries is a, is a, is a bacterial infection that affects the body, mm -hmm. that affects the teeth, yeah. when you have diabetes, your immune system is down. It's down, yeah. Your reparative capacity is also down. Okay. So patients who present with diabetes tend to have uh, prolonged healing. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they get bruised mm -hmm. uh, on their gum for whatever reason, uh, during the dental procedure or when yeah. they're brushing their teeth or when they get... Um, injured mm -hmm. mechanically, mm -hmm. they tend to uh, heal much slower, slower yeah. compared to someone who doesn't have uh, mm -hmm. yeah, diabetes. So we, we recommend that when a patient comes to the uh, dental clinic and uh, the dentist um, um, takes the history and then the patient tells them that they, 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 they have diabetes, we encourage that they, they, they continue visiting their medical mm -hmm. doctor for, All right. because those two mm -hmm. can have uh, the diabetes can have an effect on, on how we oh, treat yeah. our, our, our patients because we can try as much as possible to mm. be, to be, you know, uh, meticulous in, mm. uh, you know, doing our scaling and mm -hmm. polishing. But if mm -hmm. the diabetes is not controlled, mm -hmm. this might affect even how we treat as dentists. Okay. Yes. All right. So can we answer some few questions here? Yes. Um, this one says, "My gum hurts and." My gum hurts. I took hard meat that hurt my gum, mm. and now it's swollen on the right side of my last tooth. I'm taking painkillers and mouthwash. What can do to reduce the swelling? The gum is swell. The, the, the gum is swollen on the it's right. Swollen. Yes. On the right side. Yes. Um, first thing, the patient needs to go to the dentist mm -hmm. to have uh, the gum swollen checked mm -hmm. because there. There are other reasons as to why your molar tooth may be, you know, may have a gum swelling mm -hmm. around it. Mm -hmm. uh, I would think the patient uh, could be having, mm -hmm. 
just the general uh, the localized gingivitis what mm -hmm. we call localized gingivitis is, is mm -hmm. gum swelling on one side of the of, of the tube that is not generalized yeah. um, and depending on the age of the patient mm -hmm. uh, of the co of the person who has texted mm -hmm. um, it could also be a third molar that is uh, coming out mm -hmm. Uh, when the third molar is coming out, sometimes you can get uh, gum, uh, you know, uh, coming on top of the tooth. Mm. Yeah, mm. what you call an operculum. Yeah, this can be very, very painful because food and bacteria gets, uh, you know, dislodged In between, between the, the gum yeah. and the tooth. Yeah. So when the patient comes to the clinic, we'll do an X-ray. We'll do a physical examination mm -hmm. and do an X-ray, what you call an IOP, intraoral periapical view. Mm -hmm. Then we just see how the tooth is. Okay. Um, there are two ways we can be able to treat it. Mm -hmm. We can do an incision, uh, incision and, and uh, removal of the gum, what okay. we call operculectomy. Okay. And or we can do the removal of the tooth. Yeah. But if the tooth is impacted, so we do a surgical removal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but the key thing to remember is just go to the dentist. Okay. Let the dental, the, the dental practitioner have a look at the tooth and mm -hmm. decide what is causing mm -hmm. the, the gum swelling yeah, and then the treat swelling, appropriate, yeah. uh, appropriately. Sounds, sounds painful. Okay. This one says, yes. um, hello, this is Brenda from Nairobi. I have a problem with cheeks. They are darkening and have things like traces. So I see Zinanea is as in even the tongue, Chiniaki, it's also affected and I can't take anything hot. Please help. Um, there are conditions which uh, will affect the, the, the cheek. Mm -hmm. There are patients I see who have um, um, teeth which have been removed. Mm -hmm. So when you remove, let's say, a lower tooth, mm -hmm. the upper tooth doesn't have its counterpart. Yeah. So it tends to overgrow. So with time, you, you find uh, injury to the gum, mm -hmm. sorry, to the, to, to the cheek. All right. Or you, can ha or you can find the cheek uh, gets embedded between the upper teeth and the lower teeth, what you call the cheek bite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that can cause changes on the, on the cheek. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you get changes because you're having mechanical damage mm -hmm. of the, the, the mucosa yeah. of the cheek. Mm -hmm. So it's important to go to the dentist, mm -hmm. let them have a look and find out why you're having the cheek bite. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're having changes within your uh, tongue or, or gum or cheek, it's important to go to the dentist because that could signal something more serious. All right. Yeah, because there are cellular changes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the, the cellular changes that occurs mm -hmm. on the cheek mm -hmm. that can lead to even, uh, you know, oral cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's important to go to the dentist, let them have a look. We normally do uh, what we call a biopsy. Mm. We remove a tissue and then we tend to send mm. it for histopathology, which yeah. is basically looking at uh, a tissue under the microscope so that we see mm -hmm. exactly what what, what, is, what, yeah. what, what, what's, what's going on there. Okay. So when they're having uh, uh, mm. those kind of conditions, mm. it, could, uh, it could mean anything. Mm -hmm. And the dentist would be much better place to to, to make a diagnosis. Okay. Yes. All right, don't wait. Yes, don't it's wait. Because we do that all, <laughs> yes. all the time. All right. Okay, talking about oral cancer, then, can we talk about the idea science? Because I think it can mimic other conditions, of course, as just being typical people where we wait and see, oh, well, this one will just disappear on its own and then it mm. doesn't. And the more we wait, the more the condition worsens. Mm. So can you talk about some of the early signs of oral cancer and where does it begin um, specifically? Well, um, oral cancer, just like any other cancer, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have a known cause. Yeah. It's, it's important mm -hmm. to know that. But there are factors which uh, are considered uh, associative mm -hmm. factors to, to, to oral cancer. Okay. Uh, so a patient will come to the clinic and tell you they, they've been you know, chewing cut or uh, taking alcohol mm -hmm. or uh, you know, they've been chewing mira. Mm -hmm. Uh, taking tobacco, so this, this, and uh, the physical examination that the dentist will do, mm. would 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 now start, you know, giving that uh, practitioner mm -hmm. an indication that this is uh, getting into cancer. But of course, there are, there are signs mm. 
uh, and symptoms that we see. A patient would come and say they have pain, dental pain, yeah. or they have pain on the gum. So when the patient opens their mouth and we do a physical examination, uh, we see changes in color yeah. uh, around the, 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 the teeth that is, you know, redness, mm -hmm. and the margins are not well defined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you see that, um, we, we start now, you know, querying, uh, um, you, know, you know, oral cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, so of course we will do um, a biopsy and send it for histopathology, mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, looking at uh, the tissues under the microscope. Okay. And then, you know, you know, a diagnosis of oral cancer is made. Mm -hmm. So, um, and of course there are stages of oral cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, if you come when the oral cancer is, is, is at an early stage, it's mm -hmm. easier to treat yeah. and the prognosis is much better. Mm -hmm. when, when it's at advanced stage, mm -hmm. it has already metastasized. Mm -hmm. It has gone to, let's say, the neck, the neck yeah. and the surrounding tissues. Mm -hmm. The prognosis, which is now the likelihood that you're going to get healed becomes much, much lower because yeah. there's so much tissue, uh, tissue, tissue yeah. the, 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 the destruction. Okay. And of course the immunity goes down, yeah. the patients come when they, they cannot be able to feed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And how aggressive is it? I mean, compared to other, you know, types of cancers, how aggressive is oral cancer? Does it go from one stage to the other in a very short um, amount of time or it takes a little bit of time? It, it takes a a bit of time. Okay. It's not like the other cancers which are very aggressive. Mm. But depending on the, the, the level at which it has been detected, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now it becomes uh, more aggressive or less aggressive. If you, yeah. if you find it at a later, later stage, it becomes mm -hmm. more aggressive, mm -hmm. it becomes very hard to treat. Patients now just uh, you know, settle for palliative care mm. because there's nothing much you can we, do. We, 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 yeah. we, we can do. Um, the other um, methods of treating can actually do surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, you make an incision and then you uh, remove um, what you call healthy margins. Mm -hmm. But that is normally di uh, dictated by the level at which the cancer mm -hmm. has spread. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And, and, of, then, and of course, mm -hmm. there are medications that we put mm -hmm. the patients on. All right. Yes. Okay. And, and at what age do we see this mostly? Um, or is it even a factor? Because I don't want to believe we see a lot of um, oral cancers in children or even in adolescents. Um, it can be seen at any age. Okay. But uh, mostly it's other, we rarely see it on ch in children. All right. Okay. So middle age to very elderly. Mm and uh, immunocompromised, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, know, you know, patients. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then are there environmental factors that also bring about either dental problems or changes in, because we know some parts of the country where, of course, depending on the kind of water they take, there's, there are changes in the color as far as their teeth are concerned. But are there other environmental factors that contribute to some of the dental diseases and conditions that we talked about? Uh, Environmental factors, are, I would think about high fluoride mm. um, content areas. Yeah. There are areas where the fluoride content is very high. Mm -hmm. yeah, like in Kenya, you find uh, patients who are coming from, mm -hmm. from, from Nakuru mm. or uh, patients who stay in, in Gong area. Yeah. They have a l high fluoride content. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also patients who use uh, bo uh, borehole water. Mm -hmm tend to get uh, what we call dental fluorosis, yeah. which is basically uh, changes in color of the teeth uh, because of the, 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 the fluoride which has gone into, which has embedded itself into the, in, into, in, into, into, into the tooth. Mm -hmm. um, so basically that would be one. The other, environmental factors would be the kind of food you take. Mm, okay. So if you, if you can consider food as an environmental factor, then okay. yeah, All right. you know, high intake of sugar, chocolate, mm -hmm. sweets mm -hmm. can also cause, um, you, know, you know, dental caries and, yeah. and, and, and dental diseases. Mm -hmm. But of course, these are lifestyle conditions. Yeah, conditions that yeah, we, can, we exactly. can always do something about. Yes, exactly. Okay, so then 
can you then on that note just talk about a healthy diet because I can see our time is far much spent. Yes. So very briefly in terms of healthy diet and how does it um, help prevent cases of um, dental problems, I mean tooth decay, dental caries and you know all those um, conditions. Um, so basically a healthy diet that prevents you from uh, having uh, dental uh, diseases mm -hmm. would include that that is you know, low of starch, mm. low of sugar, okay. and high in fiber, right. and high in fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So we encourage that, you know, try as much as possible not to take your chocolate, mm -hmm. your, your biscuits, your uh, candy, mm -hmm. so that you prevent dental uh, you know, conditions and increase your vegetable intake. Mm -hmm. uh, take sugar-free gum because when you take, uh, wh when you chew gum, mm -hmm. You're having stimulation of saliva, yep. which now washes away the, mm. the, the bacteria that may cause uh, dental uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. um, rinse your mouth after taking um, uh, li you know, liquids with uh, high sugar. Yeah. yeah, don't leave the, the sugar, in the, sugar in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. because. But no, you uh, will thrive. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Okay. Mm. And, and, and what about, because um, we have some people who take too much caffeine um, mm. or carbonated drinks mm. um, as well. And of course, this is a problem. We just mm. to remind the people because sometimes they'll be like, I try, <laughs> but I cannot stop. Yes. So can you talk about then how it affects or, you know, our oral hygiene and how then do we stop? I know you've uh, talked about take some water after, mm. um, you know, taking some of them. But aside from that, what can they do? Now, coffee, tea, yeah. um, a lot of intake of coffee and tea can cause what you call extrinsic staining of the teeth. Yeah. Ex extrinsic staining basically is having s stains of the food particles on the outer on part of yeah. it, yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, we encourage patients not to take a lot of them because mm -hmm. you know, they come with stains and this yep. can also aggravate mm -hmm. the gum, um, gum disease. Mm -hmm. um, what was the second question? The second question was then, are there, could, could we, are there things they can... The they cafe, can yes. Yeah, uh, okay, let me just uh, explain the, the carbonated drinks. Yes. When you take carbonated drinks, you uh, drinks and uh, you know drinks that are high in uh, acid mm. they can actually cause uh, what we call tooth surface loss mm. Mm. okay mm -hmm. uh, because the acid now causes erosion of the teeth yeah. and when you, when you have erosion of the teeth you're exposing your your inner layer of the teeth mm. to to external mm -hmm. uh, injury yeah so you find the patients coming with uh, a lot of sensitivity, sensitivity. Yeah, yeah yeah so it's important to mm -hmm. you know reduce uh, Can you reverse it? Let's say, I mean, exposed your tooth to all that and then cases of sensitivity. Are there things that you can do? Because I know that some toothpaste where they help you manage cases of sensitivity, but can you reverse, um, you know? Well, it depends. If it's, okay. uh, if it's mild, it can be reversed. Okay. If it's severe, uh, you, you, you may need to have intervention. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, in the clinic, we normally uh, do uh, what you call fluoride therapy. Mm. Yeah, we use uh, a fluoride gel to, 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 to manage uh, mm. uh, the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. But we encourage patients to also use uh, uh, certain brands of, of, of toothpaste which have high uh, fluoride content. Okay. And, and this can be able to um, you know, manage the sensitivity. Right. Then, of course, we encourage that you don't take extreme cold and extreme, extreme hot, hot. Yes. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. drinks. Okay. Yeah. And, and for, especially for toothpaste with high fluoride content, mm. are they supposed to use it then for lifetime or they can stop at some point? Well, depending on how quickly the, okay. the sensitivity goes away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and depending on the severity of the sensitivity. Right. There are patients who come with you know, really severe sensitivity. So mm. they, they would be on fluoride therapy for, 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 for quite some time. Okay. Yeah, but the key thing is to always mm -hmm. manage the, mm -hmm. the sensitivity mm -hmm. uh, when it has been diagnosed, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Because we, tend, we, we try as much as possible to 
uh, avoid prolonged treatment of uh, you know you know, you know sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah. So compliance is very important. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so okay. you need to come to your dentist, have your uh, fillings done, mm -hmm. because the other the, the the other reasons as why somebody may have uh, sensitivity, not just uh, gum disease, mm -hmm. could have multiple uh, cavities mm -hmm. on, on their teeth, which are causing sensitivity. Remember yeah. the second layer mm -hmm. and the third layer have nerves. Yeah. So when you have holes on the teeth, the cavity is basically open. open yeah. So food, water, mm -hmm. food, uh, drinks mm -hmm. gets there and then you get sensitivity. Yeah. So there are other ways of managing sensitivity, not just uh, your, your, your fluoride. Uh, okay. Yes. All right, because there's some people who use even, especially toothpaste with high fluoride, even when they do not have conditions with sensitivity. Mm. So I don't know if that's safe or not. I think that's like a yes or no answer because we need to end the show right <laughs> now. Do they or do they not? If uh, you do not have cases of sensitivity. It will not have an effect. It will not have an effect. An effect, okay. yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. As long as the fluoride uh, levels are safe. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and point. that is where we have to end the show. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much for coming by today. Thank and of you. course, just helping us understand on matters, you know, oral hygiene. Because it's very, very, very important for all of us to just ensure that we maintain good oral hygiene, not yes. only for ourselves, but even for the people um, around us. And thank you so much for staying with us as well until the end of, of the show. For those who asked your questions, I believe that you have been answered. And for those of you who have not been able to answer, your question don't worry we'll still have another you know episode of the same and we'll try as much as possible and answer all your questions my name is Winnie Lubembe on behalf of an amazing team who put together this show we wish you a lovely day ahead see you again tomorrow same time same place god bless <laughs>